Jannard Avery getting cut is very surprising mm-hmm. and questionable, just like last year with Quincy Roche. Yeah, 100%. I was absolutely shocked <laughs> when I saw that. I'm sitting here like, bro, is there something going on behind the scenes that I do not know? Like the Melvin Ingram thing, right? Because like when that happened, we was all just like, bro, what's happening here? Like Clearly, you are the third best linebacker. Why are they moving you in an in Ingram situation and then even in this? Because when... You go back and you watch these dudes again. Jannard, man, you can see the flash. And the biggest criticism or critique that I had of his performance was him losing contain. But I still look at that as a positive because at least he's able to generate enough pressure in a hurry to make the quarterback feel like he has to escape the pocket. Because that first week when there was no TJ and there was no Alex Highsmith out there, we didn't have any type of rush going on. And then also when you're talking about a guy losing contain, that's an easy coaching fix because it's a simple communication of, hey, to your D lineman, your D tackle, whether this is Cam Hayward, Montrevis Adams, DeMarvin Leal and company, I'm going inside, cover me. It is that simple. And now this guy knows as soon as I see you flash, I'm looping around to protect you. So to me, I'm like, man, that's not enough for you to release a guy. When I watch him play, I'm like, his effort is good. I look at the first step. I look at the burst, and I'm like, yeah, you're a little rusty in terms of your hand placement, but you played two years, you know, in Cleveland as an edge, and then the previous two years you were off ball. So it's going to be an an adjustment period. The only thing that I came back to was the amount of time that he's missed because he did miss a substantial amount of training camp time. Maybe he's got another little injury going on, too. Yeah, because I'm just saying, like, okay, you missed that much time in camp. You played the game. Did you get hurt in the game? And we didn't know it. Maybe that's it. Because other than that, I'm like, I don't see how you're comfortable right now with your roster being. And let me pull up. I want to make sure I got the exact depth shot. Tuska. It's Tuska. Hamilcar. Hamilcar. And, um, oh, my God. And I'm drawing a blank on the other dude. Oh, man. Scott. Yeah, Delonte Scott. And. It's my boy Rondell Carter. He's still in that room. He didn't get cut. Yeah, he's still in that room. So right now, as we stand here today, Alex Heisman is still dealing with the rib injury. We're seeing his TJ starting with Derek Tuska right now. And Hamill Carr, Rondell Carter, or Delonte Scott. He was getting some first team reps, yeah. apparently. Yeah. So it's like, all right, that's who you're rolling with going into a game. I'm personally not comfortable with that. And then even when I think of, okay, at least we would have TJ in the scenario, but what happens if it ever flipped and it wasn't TJ out there? Now I'm over here about to throw up a mouth. That's, that's you know, when I'm thinking about that particular group right now, I just, I feel like they're missing a little bit more of a higher end three. Somebody that gives you just a lot more confidence because there's not a lot of in-stadium experience with those guys. I'm not saying that they can't develop into that, but just based on what we've seen in the two preseason games. And last year. And last year, yes, they have limitations. And when you're talking about coming into a season where one guy's already leaking, you know, Tyson's been off for what two weeks now with his rib. I watched thing. his interview today. Bro. They asked him about week one. Bro. He said, "Yeah, but he you took a couple you seconds saw it. before he answered." You saw it, it. yeah. So to me, I'm over here like, man, how does this play out? What, what, like, what are these looking like? You know, because we know it's a long season and injuries do happen. Guys get banged up. You might miss a game or two. It happens. But the depth part—that's the part for me where I'm like, I think. Jannard Avery is not as big of a drop off. Whereas right now, based on the guys we currently have, where they're at in their career development, there is a significant drop off right now. Now, hopefully they can close that gap and, you know, come Sunday, they come out here and show us something totally different. But just based on what they've shown thus far at the professional level, I'm personally not as confident with that group going in right now, man. I'm with you. It didn't make sense. Yeah. I actually thought it was hilarious because we just recorded that podcast Absolutely, on bro. Monday. Absolutely. And you were like, you know what He's I the took three, away bro. from this preseason game? He's the three. We could definitely trust He's the three. Jannard Avery. <laughs> He's the three. And that's <laughs> and why, cut him the next that's why I was like, bro, what? I'm like, who? <laughs> you know what I'm thinking, though? What's up? They made a couple moves like this last year. Yeah. Like with Arthur Mallette. I'd agree. He had a good preseason. And but it they seemed waited like he carved the la- out a role. I thought they waited to the last. I know. that's that The timing's weird like, a little bit. I'm with you. You still got a whole game left. So that's why I wonder if yeah. he did injure something, but it was only going to be like a week or two thing. He was never going to practice yeah. or play. Because so they're just like, we're going to cut you. Yeah. We got a spot for you. Wait till we get some injury reserve stuff taken care and of. And then we get we'll you bring back. bring it back. That could definitely be Because he doesn't have to worry about waivers, right? Yeah, that could definitely be the case. It just... For me, it like that can hundred percent be the case, and if that is the communication, then it's just on Jannard to just trust that the organization everything works out. 
we talked about those scenarios. Sometimes it does work out like that. Sometimes it doesn't. But as long as they have that type of conversation, that type of agreement, cool. But for me, man, I'm just sitting here like, this isn't adding up. I right, breaking news. All right, here we go. Talk to me. Tampa Bay Buccaneers sign. Oh, Jernard I Avery. That. Yeah. <laughs> yep. It makes sense, man. <laughs> I'm telling you, like I said, unless there was, if it wasn't that agreement that you was talking about, Deke, it I'm didn't happen. Like, obviously, I don't, I don't get it because to me, Jannard is our third best. Well, he was our third best outside linebacker. That's how I felt about it, man. <laughs> I'm shocked. I am, but it is a part of it, man. It's part of it. You know, the team they 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 have their own method. They have a. They better have a big yeah, move in the wings right I, here. I, I, I'm trusting the Steelers. or trusting in in Mike Tomlin and Omar Khan. Yeah, you know this is a test. We'll see what it looks like. But yeah, I, I I'm very uneasy about that situation right now. Okay, I got a little explanation from Tomlin too. Okay, it was roster reductions. We mm-hmm. make decisions based on what we think positions us to put together the best 53, and we're appreciative of his efforts. But we made the decision to move on. So he basically told us nothing. Right. Yeah. The huge. Wow. I mean. Yeah. It's a red flag if he's getting picked up literally within 24 hours. 24 the hours. Move, the move was made, what, to, uh, was it last? Super Bowl contender in yeah. Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Dude, no, no, no. It might have just been, it might, he might have just cleared because it's four. Well, he didn't have the cut waivers, but I'm right. wondering because it's four o'clock. No, why did, are you sure he doesn't have the cut waivers? I, I read think, something that said he's so far in the game as a veteran that he doesn't have to worry about waivers. I could be wrong. No, on no, that. no. You're right. You're right. This is four. So he has four credit seasons. Yeah, as long as it's four credit seasons, he's good. I wasn't sure if he had the four, but you're right. He was two years in Philly, two years in Cleveland, so he's good. Yeah. So maybe a deal was in mm-hmm. place between him and the Steelers. It's just that uh, an offer came in real quick, and he didn't want to wait around. <laughs> I've seen these scenarios happen. I was just, we, we've seen these scenarios happen, man. It can happen. Because it's a trust on both ends. I've seen it where the player, and, and this is not the way because we don't have the information, but just context. I've seen the scenario where the player, you know, you have the agreement and they switch it up. I mean, we Tyson did it, right? Tyson with Jacksonville. Right. Yeah, so it happens. But then I've also seen it where you think you're coming back and that team is like, ah, uh, no, nah, we don't actually need you anymore. And now you're stuck. I've seen that as sure, well, man. Right, so, yeah, right. for, it happens, For bro. Avery, who knows yeah. who gets cut between this last Absolutely. preseason game and when cuts actually have to happen. Yeah. And Steelers see an outside line break. And that like, changes everything. Screw Avery. We're picking yeah. this guy up. And then we'll be over here like, hey, man, it's business. Right. So, yeah, if you're Jannard, it's like, I get it. I, I definitely do, man. And you got to think, he doesn't have this long relationship with the organization. Mm. So there isn't this trust. He's been here since March when right. we signed him. So, yeah, not a lot of, you know, positive equity builds up between those two. 